Greetings and salutations and welcome to Unfortunate Sods. I'm Albie and today we're doing something a little different. Something I've been wanting to do for a while, which is make Warhammer tutorials. So for today's tutorial, we'll be taking a look at how to magnetize a Leviathan Dreadnought. A Leviathan Dreadnought has been out for a few years now, and there's a few guides on how to magnetize it. So why do one now? Well, because one, why not? Also, some of these tutorials magnetized almost every moving part of the Leviathan Dreadnought, which makes it more like an action figure than an actual model. So we'll be magnetizing the important bits, the bits where the Leviathan will be going pew pew. To begin with, this is what we're going to need. Superglue. Any old superglue will do. This is the one that I happen to be using today. We are also going to need a little needle of some kind, uh, something like this, maybe a little sewing needle. Now, this one came from a clay shaper. Um, I use it, weirdly enough, not to do anything with um, putty or anything like that. Uh, I actually use this to poke little, I, I guess, little markers in areas that I need, similar to what you would say when drilling a hole in the wall. What you are also going to need is a little toothpick. Uh, might seem a little bit weird, but we'll see uh, what I use it for later on. What we're also going to need is some paint of some kind. Now, I'm picking out Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, any old paint will do. Only reason I'm picking a bright red is just because it's a lot easier to see on the model itself. Uh, what we're also going to need is a pin vise. Something like this. Uh, I'm only using this pin vise is just because it's got different or can take different little drills. Um, for example, let's just pull this apart. Something like that. And that almost all pin vices can do that. Um, but we do want one that can take various sizes, specifically a small and a large one. Um, unfortunately, due to current circumstances, I do wish I had one that can take an even bigger drill. But this is what I've got at the moment. What we're also going to need are drills themselves. So, stuff like this. So, we, I'm picking out something quite small. Any small one will do, so, and I'm not too sure the size of this one. The other one that we're going to need is uh, these drills, which also come with corresponding magnets. Or rather, the magnets come with corresponding drills, however you want to put it. Now, this is the Mod FX Rare Earth Magnet Starter Pack. It comes with various uh, magnets, a 2mm, 3mm, 4.75 and a 10mm magnet. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have a drill with its 10mm magnet. Now, each of these magnets, if I recall, are 2x1s. So, for example, if there's a 2mm magnet, it's a 2x1. Same with the 3, it's a 3x1, 4.75x1 and a 10 by one now, the magnets that we will be using for this one is specifically the 3mm magnet and the 475 magnet. The final thing that we need is the Leviathan Dreadnought itself. Um, I've done this in multiple sub-assemblies, that being said, the legs, the torso and the arms, leaving separately the guns themselves on the torso guns and the arm guns themselves from these little shoulder joints as well as the actual shoulder itself. Let's begin with the torso, shall we? Get out one of the torso weapons and our little sewing needle or pin and find out where the center of this whole gigantic section is. So we can work out probably roughly around, that's where one half of it is and it's about the other half. So our little center point should be roughly about here. Maybe a little bit further back slightly, there we go. Something like that. Cool, perfect. Get out our little pin vise and drill and just drill straight into it. So let's just make sure that's perfectly lined up with the little spot, there we go, and just drill. At th this point, it really doesn't matter how deep we go. I'm gonna go about this deep. That looks about right. Yep, that's perfect. Now we're gonna switch drills. Now that we've switched to our larger drill, go up against that point again there we go, and it's a perfect marker, and just drill. Um, we're going to drill this to about as deep as we need to for that magnet to fit in. So hopefully not too deep, but you know, we've got to make sure it's still deep enough. Now that we've drilled a decently enough 
deep hole, I guess. But we need to test if the magnet will fit in there nicely or if we need to keep drilling some more. So there's two ways about testing it. We could simply just grab our magnet and just you know, pop it in and check if it's the right size. However, depending on your drill, sometimes, you know, when you push your magnet in, it's it sits there perfectly flush and rather frictionally, and you know, you won't won't be able to yank it back out. So a good way to test is get your drill that you've just drilled this with, pull it out and get the back of it, just push it in. So it goes about that deep. So grab your fingernail, just push up against the drill or the flat section and just pull. That's about how how deep the hole is. So get out your magnet. And let's just go up against it. We could probably go a little bit deeper, maybe. Nope, that looks about that looks about right actually. Yep, that's perfect. It's it's a little bit deeper than it should, and that's for mostly where the super glue will fit. Alright. So next thing that we need to check is for polarization. We've got to make sure that you know when we glue the magnet in here, it will still fit on the dreadnought itself. So you could do two separate different polarizations, one for left and right, as I've done here. Um, but for me, I actually want them to be the same. Um, it's just a lot easier. I mean, yes, you can, you know, you might accidentally put the wrong side in. It's kind of hard to do so. But I do want to get a perfect, you know, both the same. Symmetry, right? So a good way to test this out is simply, you know, getting the piece that you've already done already and just pop it on and then glue it in like that. Another way to do it is if, as if we've already got the weapon, we could go from the other side. It glues like that, which means that this part needs to go in to there. Simple, right? So get out your super glue. Get out your toothpick and just put a, a dash of super glue on there. Now, I might have to squeeze this quite hard because it is mostly fairly empty. Oh. So, wrong piece. There we go. Now that we've got a bit of glue, super glue on our toothpick, I'm going to push it in like so and just go around the edge of it Something like that that'll do um, because this is some very stringy super glue I'm gonna put this to one side get our tissue out and just wipe off a little bit of excess Something like there we go cool once again we're actually going to use this to test our polarization so let's just push it up against perfect I'm gonna Push that in. There you go. It's, it's got a bit of resistance. It's probably due to the super glue. All right, cool. So using the back of our fingernail, because I, I really don't want to get super glue on my fingers, because that's a bit of a pain. Washing it off your fingernail is a lot easier. Just push push it against and make sure it's flat in. Is it going to pop back out? No, perfect. Just push it again. If you don't want to use your fingernail, you could use your cutting board and just push it down, but be careful, it will stick to that. So super glue is kind of leaking out to the side. That's fine. I'm just going to keep pushing it in and holding it until the super glue is dry. Now that our super glue is dry, we need to um, drill a hole into the torso and put a magnet in there as well. Now you'll notice that this one is slightly off center and we could just, you know, find out where the center is like we did before and drill a hole. However, you know, as shown here, the magnet actually sits a little bit further back. So what we're going to do to find out the location is, is we're going to get, you know, we're going to get our magnets, just pop it on like that. We only need one, so let's just take off the rest, put that to a side. Cool, perfect. Get out your paint, pop it open. We're going to get a little, a little bit of red on here, just on the magnet itself. Something like that. There we go. That's a bit much. So what we're going to do is get back our tissues again. Just wipe off most of it. About there. There we go. That's that's enough. Cool. What I'm going to do is get your torso and just carefully push this in. So we're going to get it lined up like this and just push straight down and stamp our little little marker. 
Cool. Once that's done, let's just pull it out. There you go. Maybe we wiped off a little bit too much. But that, that, that's enough of a indicator for, for my purposes. We'll get our little pin again. And just from here, just, uh, that's about good lighting. Just, just poke a little hole right about center there. Similar to where that other one is, maybe a little bit forward. There we go. Something like here. That's perfect. Get our little drill again and just drill into that little marker. Alrighty, now that our hole is deep enough, what we're going to need to do is get our toothpick, bit of super glue, wriggle it around in there, and then push the magnet up against it. Now that our magnet is in and drying, what we're going to need to do is the exact same thing on the other weapons, because what's the point of magnetizing a Leviathan Dreadnought if you're not going to switch its weapons? Do the same steps as we did for the Heavy Flamer in where we're you know, marking out where the center is, drilling a hole, and then perfect. That'll be done, and we'll have four interchangeable torso weapons, or rather two sets of interchangeable torso weapons. Moving on to the arm weapons. What we're going to need is the arm weapons themselves and this shoulder connection joint. Now this one is actually a lot more easier than, I, I would say a little bit easier anyway, than the torso itself. Mostly because this shoulder piece sits pretty much within the actual arm itself and finding a little center point between these two is quite easy. All right. so again, take out your sewing needle or little pin just find the center of this. So I'm going to wager around here. There we go. Yeah, maybe to the side a little bit. There we go. That's perfect. I'll just poke a hole in there. I'm going to do the same thing on the weapon itself. And then find the center point of this as well. Which is roughly about here will do. Yeah, roughly, roughly there. Perfect. Get out your small drill. Again, we're going to drill into this hole that we've marked, which is roughly about, there we go, cool. We'll just drill straight into it. Once that's done, also drill straight into our little shoulder joint here. Do the same on the other weapons or all the weapons that you have. And then switch drills to the larger drill and, and drill into that. So now that we've drilled in our hole, we can glue in the magnet like we have with the other weapons. However, I find that the 3mm magnet isn't strong enough to hold or bear the weight of this particular weapon or any of the arm weapons. So what we're going to do is actually use the 4.75mm magnet, which means we're going to need to continue drilling and expand this uh, particular hole. Now, the reason why I like to start off with a small little, I guess, needle point and then drill a hole into that and then drill a slightly larger hole is mostly because as you sort of incrementally increase the width of the hole, it's a lot more easier to keep control of, I, I say keep control, keep control of where that point is. So for example, when I start using this particular drill, which is the 4.75 millimeter um, drill bit, you can sort of see when I put it in here and let's say I have my, with my drill bit, I start drilling, it's not gonna slide around at all. It's, it's actually gonna just fit right in and then I can just drill straight away. And I recommend doing that with you know any of your other size holes that you might be drilling. Let's say if you're doing any other miniature that might need a five millimeter hole, you know, incrementally increase it up. You don't have to do you know, multiple small ones. You could do you know, like a very small drill and then increase to a three and then go straight to a five, for example. Um, at least that way you could always keep the center point. Now, I don't actually have a uh, drill vise, sorry, um, to be able to you know, drill this in. So what I'm gonna do is shred my fingers and do this by hand. Dumbest idea ever, but considering the current environment we're in, trying to get a hold of one, not the easiest. So we'll get back to you right after we uh, expand this hole. With our larger hole drilled in, we can test the depth of this hole just to make sure our mag fits perfectly in. Yep, that looks about correct. From here, what we're gonna do is grab our toothpick, grab our super glue, 
wrap around the edges of this hole, glue our magnet in, and then do the same for the rest of the pieces. Once that's done, our Leviathan Dreadnought, the arms at least, are now fully magnetized. There you have it, how I prefer to magnetize a Leviathan Dreadnought. Now when it comes to taking these in a game of 9th edition, I can switch out the Heavy Flamers for Volkites, if only I could use those in 9th. And I can switch out the Amazing Storm Cannons for some Grab Flux Bombards, or in future some Cyclonic Melter Lances, just to mix up the game a little. And without further ado, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe, hit that bell button. If you have any feedback or comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and fare thee well.